All right, it is 6.30 on the dot, and I want to honor your time. I know you've got lots of places you can be, and we're glad you're here. But we want to uh, cover as much information in the time we have to answer what I'm guessing is several questions that you brought into the room with you. Uh, my name is Joshua Brazil. I'm the Executive Director with Parents for Public Schools of Pitt County. Uh, this is by far our most well-attended workshop year after year. And so we are glad that you're here. Uh, we've uh, got a great uh, set of presenters that are going to answer uh, hopefully all of your questions tonight. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end of the session. So if you don't touch on your question and a part they're talking about, hold on to it. Uh, we'll bring them all back up and we'll try to answer any additional questions after we've covered all the material uh, that we can. A few logistics uh, as we get started. Um, most importantly, uh, there are cookies in the back. <laughs> Uh, fruit if you want to be healthy and water so please step back and get that if you need it bathrooms are straight out the back double doors go down the hallway just a little bit on your left uh, I know that you may need to slip out early and that's perfectly fine uh, we are recording it uh, we're actually recording it twice just in case one recording uh, messes up we also have a chapter uh, of parents for, parents for public schools in Portland Oregon that's thinking about doing a kindergarten 101 so they're joining us via zoom just to kind of listen and see how we do what we do. So on the back on the way out, uh, you'll get some resources. Uh, feel free to pick up whatever you want to, but I wanted just to really quickly highlight what's back there. This is just a little um, half page about who we are and what we do. So uh, parent engagement programs, workshops like this, uh, parent engagement cohort, that's a big one of our big programs. Um, community conversations where we ask the same set of questions uh, we sit down with the district, with the superintendent, and come up with some questions to ask, and it just gives everybody in the community, uh, whether you're a parent, grandparent, caregiver, uh, grandmother, just community member, just to kind of give some feedback about our public schools here in the county. Um, so we have those kind of throughout the spring, so I encourage you to follow us on our social media, see where and when those are, um, and so they'll be over the next few weeks between now and the end of March. And then school tours. Uh, we do a spring school tour series uh, in each year that we do a tour of all of our schools. Last year we ended up doing 28 tours at 26 different schools. About 310 people came to those. A lot of folks that come to those are just like you, kindergartners that are transitioning into school. Um, a few of the tables have a QR code on them. There's a QR code in the back before you leave tonight. Uh, we have just about finalized our tour series. So you can go ahead and hit that QR code. If you've got one or multiple schools you're interested in touring, you can see when those tours are going to be. Uh, they start on February 20th, and they go to the, through the third week of March. And so right now there's one tour at all of our schools, or there will be since we confirmed the last two. Um, so if you don't see your school on there, uh, it'll be up there as, as soon as it can be. But we wanted you to have access to that tonight. Go ahead and start to sign up for those tours uh, as well. This is something I'm, I'm very excited about. Uh, this is a new program we're starting. So on the back, you'll see a sheet that looks just like this. It's got information about our parent engagement program, which is focused on early childhood development. So really, it's geared towards families with children zero to five. Um, it's built off of a lot of research and study from Harvard University. Uh, it goes over uh, six modules. The first one is just an introduction to the material. Module two is understanding brain development and how learning occurs. Uh, module three is supporting social emotional development, fostering strong relationships. In module four, we talk about minimizing toxic stress and creating access to stable environments. Module five, we talk about supporting language, literacy, and pre-academic skills. And then module six, we talk about providing strong nutrition and physical activity. So it's really building upon some of these things to help uh, children be ready to start kindergarten and be as successful as they can be. So those are going to be, um, there's four three-hour sessions. They're going to be in the morning uh, from 8.30 to 11.30, um, March 6th, March 20th, April 3rd, and April 17th. So this is our very first cohort. Uh, if you're at all interested uh, in the PEP ECD, uh, please just email me. Uh, you've got pads of paper. I'll, I'll spell out my email address for you. It's J B R E A. Z E A L E at ppspitcounty.org. J B R E A Z E A L E at ppspitcounty.org. 
uh, you can reach out to me and say, hey, I'm interested in the cohort. I want to know more, and I will answer some more questions. But there's a flyer about what that is uh, at the back. This is a little packet. Um, so Lisa Tate's one of the first ones you're going to hear from. This is kind of a really good resource packet for you, and she may touch on what's, what's in here, but these are on the back table. Uh, some really good resources as you're getting ready to start kindergarten for your little ones. Uh, if you're interested in the Spanish Immersion Program, we've got three schools in the county that offer that for kindergartners. Um, I have the date. Elmhurst is doing a information session on Tuesday, February 20th at 5.30 in one of the kindergarten classrooms. Uh, so just if you're interested at all learning more about what Spanish Immersion is, uh, Elmhurst is doing one. I'm, I'm sure the other two schools are doing them. I just don't know the dates of that, and I apologize about that. Uh, but learn anything you want to about the immersion program. Elmhurst is a 90-10, so 90% of the day is in Spanish, 10% is in English. The other two schools that do it, Belvoir and Pactolis, are 50-50. So one day is English, one day is Spanish. Um, so information about that if you're interested. Some of you may be aware of what school your children are going to go to. Some of you may still be deciding. Uh, this is a publication from Pitt County Schools, and in it, it's got a little, lots of articles, but it also has a breakdown of all of the schools. So the student body, number, just some basic things about each of the schools. So please take one of these if you'd like that as a resource as well. And lastly, there's a couple of sheets uh, from Sylvan Learning about some of their summer camps, and then Ready Kindergarten Go, so just some information about some resources and classes and things available with Sylvan Learning. Um, and Ms. Brittner, uh, if you have any questions about it, she can answer those for you afterwards as well. So lots of resources on that table. Um, again, welcome to Kindergarten 101. Welcome to Pitt County Schools. Uh, and so we're excited to get started with our stuff tonight. Uh, we're going to start with Lisa Tate and Shannon Wainwright. And Lisa is the PCS Director of Elementary Education. And Shannon is the PCS Director of Data, Research, and Accountability. So ladies, thank you for being here tonight. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. We're excited to be able to have this conversation with you. Um, we're going to take um, a moment and go through the first of the slides. I think our clicker's not working today. Don't you love technology? Sometimes. Okay, so we are going to be talking about the kindergarten registration process. And as um, it was already said, th these booklets are in the back. We also will have these at the school, and we are right now printing them in Spanish as well. This is hot off the press. We were trying to get them ready for you tonight. Um, so, it, so most of the things that we are talking about, you will have in that book as well. So I may have already given it away because the slide went ahead, but see if you can answer that question. How many questions do you think a five-year-old asks per day? A lot. Somebody told me about 50,000, and I think they, I agree with that. But in actuality, the answer is about 300 questions per day, which is still an awful lot. Now times that by about 25 in a kindergarten class, and you can feel some grace and, um, for your teachers that you will have for your students. So that's a lot of questions coming at you at one time. So to start us off, of course, a lot of people ask this question about registration, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but we have two other ladies that are going to go more in depth. But these are just a few bullet points. Um, your child must be five on or before <coughs> August 31st to be eligible for admitted, admittance. This is not a Pitt County. This is actually a state legislation I get a lot of phone calls about this even if they're a day before that's just day after excuse me we often get calls and, and we can work with some people about that but mostly this is you know where we have our deadline it has to be before 5 before August 31st our dates and times are going to be posted on the Pitt County School website in February and I'll go ahead and tell you that most of those are all in March they are different times a lot of our schools um, do those times so you can walk through the school while there are still students there because it's good for your um, little one to be able to see what school really looks like when there are other kids there, not just an empty building. So please um, be ready. You can go straight to the website. There's a tab that you click on and it's going to simply say, I want to register for kindergarten and it'll have all the information that you need um, for that. 
Again, everything will be in English and Spanish. And most of the um, registration sessions will be held in the main office area. And I'm, in a minute, Ms. Wainwright's going to talk about that. This is just some acquired information. I'm sure you've seen this before, but these are some things that you need to have ready and prepared for when you do register your child. Um, we also encourage you to take of those school tours that have already um, been mentioned. We have two wonderful principals here tonight, and they're going to talk a little bit about, about that as well. Um, you will receive um, specific information. So when your, your child starts school, we do a mini assessment just to see where they are. And you will have more information about that when you um, get with the school or you sign them up at that school site. What happens during the assessment, a lot of questions um, about that, it's very minimal. They usually ask your child questions about um, counting one to 10, writing their name, letter recognition, um, print awareness. Some have some writing involved, but nothing that is, is done in a friendly environment with teachers that they have. So um, it's, we often do it in the summer and sometimes we do it when school actually starts. <coughs> So I'm now going to turn it over to Ms. Wainwright, and she's going to talk about something that's really new and exciting. Yes, new to our district this school year is new online registration. So as Ms. Tate talked about, there will be dates sent out for every school for when they'll have hold kindergarten registration. And when you go to the school, if you go to the school, you will get a computer and you will do your registration on that computer. Now, if you can't make it to the school on those dates, you will have access to the registration portal, which can be found on our website. Okay? We do not want to deter any parents from going to the school to register their child. So if you want to register online from your home, or using your cell phone or laptop or your desktop, that's fine, but you can still go to that school, and especially if they're offering time to walk through the building, please do that as well. It just gives you another option um, for registering your child, and you can do that um, from the comfort of your home. Um, this is new for us, um, so we are asking for grace and kindness um, for us, for our data managers, our schools, our parents, um, because it is going to be an adjustment anytime you have something new like this. It's, it, we'll have a few bumps in the road, but we will get through those um, because obviously we want it to be a very um, easy transition for you guys to enroll your kids at kindergarten. Um, you know, so we can start the year off um, and have a good year. Um, let's see. You will have to create an account. That's, um, that's kind of important. Uh, make sure you keep up with your username and password. Um, inside the portal, obviously you can go on Opus, that's at the bottom of the screen, to find out what school your child is slated to attend based off their address, okay? But when you go into the portal to register your child, the system is going to, once you put in your address, the system is going to tell you where your child is supposed to go to school as well. Um, so you don't have to go to Opus, but it's available if you would like to. But we worked with, um, oh wow, Pitt County Management something. Ah, I cannot think of the name of it right this second. Um, and they have put in some um, geocaching so we can make sure we know the locations of all the schools and those things. Um, I think that's it. Obviously, you upload your documents into the system. You know, that birth certificate, immunizations, anything like that that you have, proof of residency. You upload it into the system. You can use your cell phone, take a quick pic. If you don't have a way to upload into the system, you can take those documents to the school. Okay, so we are just hoping to offer more options for parents so that it's easier um, to enroll your kid in school. So remember, we're going to practice grace and kindness because it's going to be new for all of us so just remember that um, and if you see me remind me that we are practicing grace and kindness thank you Ms. Wainwright just a few items that we often get asked in my department about what will they be learning in kindergarten we just wanted to show you some examples again we have some administrators here that are going to go into some detail about that but this is what it would look like in a small group setting with literacy 
So you, we have the small group write, uh, reading instruction, and then we go over letters and sounds and center activities. And yes, we do is, um, begin to write in kindergarten. Um, back in my day, we were just used to doing the letters and moving on. Um, but now we do expect for them to be able to write um, as well as because writing leads to reading. These are some items that they will be going over in math. Um, numbers, counting objects, uh, shapes, measurements, and graphs, which, you know, that this actually used to be third grade, so you can see how things are as we move forward. Um, and solving problems. I will say the kindergartners do love that because they're able to go out and measure the gym floor outside. We do it in a fun way, so that, that's a positive. Science is the most fun because if it's icky and sticky, our kids like it. So we do a lot about science and especially about weather. Social studies, it all is about the community and becoming good citizenship, um, having, having good citizenship and learning about ourselves and others. A lot of our schools have what we call morning meetings where the teacher meets them at the door, but then they have a, a moment for them to sit and just have a prompt for the day and kind of start their day on a good, foot, on a good footing. Um, that has been something that we utilize in a lot of our schools. It's been very popular. And I know I was going to answer questions, but I think we're going to wait. Do you want to? There may be some cross answering of questions as we go. So if you got one, hold on to it. We'll come back and we'll let these ladies answer any questions that you have. Um, gentlemen, if you mind, I'm, I'm going to switch uh, and let Ms. English go first. Keep all the enrollment stuff together. So um, Ms. English is uh, the coordinator of student services, uh, but part of her job is working with open enrollment. And so I'm guessing many of you have had have questions about open enrollment, so we'll let you dive into that. Okay. Oh, there's a tab at the top. <clears throat> Okay, I'm Sarah English. I am the coordinator of student services in Pitt County, and what that means is I work with counselors and social workers, but I also help with open enrollment. And um, you'll see the director of student services, Karen Harrington. So a few enrollment tips and reminders. Um, enrollment information is located on the PCS student assignment website. Um, as Ms. Tate and Ms. Wainwright talked about, making sure to have those required documents, and we are practicing grace and kindness um, for, for online enrollment for the 24-25 school year. Schedule health assessments and immunizations early. So if you can go ahead and do that now, if you know your child's gonna be in kindergarten, go ahead and do that now. Um, and I'm sure Ms. Reed, Ms. Lori Reed will talk about this a little bit more in depth, but if you are um, enrolling a kindergartner for, from their first day of enrollment, they have 30 days to have their health assessment form completed from their, from a doctor and the um, complete immunizations that are required, okay? Open enrollment. So open enrollment is if you um, and your family decide that you would like to apply for your child to attend a school that is outside your attendance zone. Um, the open enrollment timeline for the 24-25 school year opens on March 1st this year. Okay, only applications that are submitted on or after March 1st, so there's a window from March 1st to March 15th is when we accept applications for the 24-25 school year. Please wait until it goes live on March 1st. If you log on ahead of time and you complete the application that's posted now, it will be deleted. So for the 24-25 school year, March 1st is when we're starting, okay? Um, and this is for, hot off the press. The open enrollment schools list for the 24-25 school year will be um, formally approved at the February Board of Education meeting. However, we do have it in draft form. It would, it, if it's not already posted to the website, it should be soon. So you can see um, the high schools, middle schools, and then the elementary slash K-8 schools that are eligible for open enrollment for the 24-25 school year. Okay, and I didn't print that off for you tonight because it still is draft, okay, but I did get permission to share it with you, okay? Oh, 
Okay, so for open enrollment, all requests must be completed online. And if the, I, when parents call, I tell them the easiest way to do it is just Google Pitt County Schools open enrollment. It's also on our website, but the, the easiest and fastest way to get there is to do it that way. So the steps are to complete an online request for open enrollment. Um, and then you will receive a notice of approval or denial via email. And it comes from um, an email address that says at powerschools. The email address is at powerschools.net, I think. Um, please don't contact the office prior to March 16th for application status. If you've waited a week or two after March 16th and you still haven't gotten that email, please call us, okay? That means something happened with the system, okay? Um, requests for schools not on the open, approved open enrollment list will be denied, okay? And if you get a denial and you have a question about why, you can always call. Um, but if they're not on that list, we are not able to permit open enrollment application status to be approved. We are, um, we are unable to make recommendations about the best school. First of all, we love all of our schools in Pitt County, but each school has unique offerings that you can go see on a school tour to learn which might be the best fit for you and your child, okay? And la so after March 15th, so our window for 24-25 is March 1st through the 15th. After March 15th, during the school year, if you decide that you would like your child to go to another school, um, there is an opportunity for you to do that during the school year. So the specific dates for that will be published once our 24-25 school calendar is finalized and approved by our Board of Education. But in the last five days of each marking period for elementary and middle and each semester for high school, you can apply for open enrollment during the school year, okay? Um, any applications submitted outside those published windows will not be processed until the window reopens. So if the window opens on, on um, let's just say October 30th and closes on November 4th, if we get one on November 6th, it'll wait till the January date, okay? Okay. If you move during the school year, open enrollment is not necessary. You just, if you move during the school year and your child's gonna move um, schools based on your new address, all you need to do is go to the school that's in your attendance zone and tell them what's going on and they'll help you, okay? All right. Good. So, um, Monday, February 5th is the February Board of Education meeting. Yes. So, um, we'll post a link. You, you're more than welcome to come in person if you want to come um, see what one's like. I encourage you to do that. I hear some great things about what happens in our county. But we'll post a link to their live stream. So, if you just want to know that night uh, what if it gets approved or not. And I believe, does anybody know, is the um, calendar being approved in February as well? Maybe? Possibly? <laughs> um, the, the school calendar perhaps maybe might be approved that day as well. Uh, lots of questions about the start date with the calendar. I will say um, there is a state law uh, that schools cannot start any earlier than a particular date. And so uh, we know there is an overwhelming support within the county of, of a desire to start early so that exams for high schoolers happen before Christmas. Uh, They're looking at every avenue to make that a possibility. The, I can assure you that the district knows and is aware of the desire of the community in a large part to do that. Um, I encourage you, if that would be something you'd like to see happen, please write and call and email and um, bombard your state legislators <laughs> and tell them that's what you would like to happen uh, because that's what's holding it up from preventing that from happening. Uh, but hopefully the calendar and the open enrollment dates will be approved on that first Monday uh, in February uh, just to set some things for that. Um, last thing on school tours, just so you know, uh, children are more than welcome to come with you on school tours. Uh, we want, and schools want children to be able to see it too. So bring your little ones with you to any of those school tours. They are more than welcome to be a part of any of those tours, and you can go on as many tours as you'd like to go on. Um, you really, I can't stress enough how much you can learn about your school. So if you're thinking about where you want to go, a great way to make that decision is to go on the school tours and to learn about those schools. So we have invited uh, two of our uh, elementary administrators, uh, principals to talk about from the perspective of, from the administration, 
what would be helpful for you to know coming in? So we've got Mr. Casey from Aiden Elementary School and Mr. Maness from Ridgewood Elementary School. So gentlemen, thank you for being here and talking about what kindergarten looks like in your buildings. Sure. All right. Thanks for having us. All right, so we're going to kind of split up how we are presenting. So I'm going to go through, you didn't have to literally walk away from me, but it's okay. Um, so we're going to literally going to split up. Um, I'm Curry Manis. I am the principal of Ridgewood. I'm not on the open enrollment, but I have a lot of homes for sale. He is on the open enrollment, so if you really like him. We have homes for sale, too. I have homes for sale as well. Yes. Um, but glad to be here tonight. I'm going to focus a lot more on the functional side of things for our kids. What are some of the things that when they walk in the door that will be very helpful? Because a lot of times kindergarten is a is a interesting experience for our, our teachers. Um, sometimes like herding cats, so it's just trying to get some of that functional skills out of the way. For, for example, making sure to learn how to tie their shoes, like being able to do that part. Um, potty training is a big part that we still um, work with from time to time, and that includes you know being able to. Unbutton and button. I know it's, it's very simple, but when you have 20 different kids all asking you to do the same thing, that adds up a lot of time and takes away from a lot of academics. Um, knowing their full name. So that is always a big part coming in and being able to know their name, be able to work on spelling of their names. Uh, naps. We do not take naps. They will be tired, they will be cranky, they will be aggravated those first few days. Um, maybe first couple weeks of kindergarten. So just kind of know that, be expecting of that when they come home, they're going to be ready to crash. So that's, that part's going to come in. They will adjust. They are very resilient when it comes to those things. Um, also, lunch time. Knowing, starting to learn their lunch number. Now I'll be honest with you, my kindergartners and first graders do a lot better job of knowing their lunch numbers than my fifth graders do. Because they make it a game, they practice it, they, they enjoy practicing it at home, inside their classroom. So learning what that lunch number looks like, they'll type it into a keypad, which still at kindergarten, that's pretty cool for them to be able to touch, you know, and be able to do that part of it, and their little picture pops up. So learning that lunch number, um, and then just with lunch itself, learn how to open up items for themselves so when they get to that table that they can actually put the straw in the drink or they can open the fruit cup they can do those little problem solving skills for themselves um that includes like carrying the trays but then um i saw it out here that's been beautiful i've been watching a lot of the, the kids as they were coming in they got the markers and the pencils practicing those kind of things before they get there learn how to cut being able to use a marker those are all things that are very helpful coming in week one. Um, now, switching from the kids' functional skills to adult functional skills, um, really quickly, a couple things that are very helpful is um, with the car rider line, I understand what that process looks like. The, typically, most schools have some type of independence day of they let the parents walk their kids to class those first couple of days um, of the school year. And then, I'll be honest with you, we all say that's for the kids, it's for the adults. It's not for the kids, the kids are fine. We, we figured that out during, honestly, we figured that out during COVID when that couldn't take place. Um, the kids can walk to class, they, they're good, it's a herd mentality, they, they follow the herd, they, they end up at their classroom. Um, but just kind of knowing that side of it and then understand the flow of traffic at your individual school, seeing what that looks like traffic at my school, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to back up a lot at the very beginning of the morning, but once it starts rolling, it, it gets through it pretty quickly, but knowing, making sure, like for example, at my school at the end of the day, we take down numbers, I have a guy that walks out and takes down the card numbers, and one of the biggest skills that I have to sometimes remind parents of is they'll want to get out of line and now that's messed up the whole car rider line whenever they get to the front because everybody's thrown off the number and all the kids are showing up to the wrong pin. So just kind of learning what that looks like at your school, ask that on the tour. Ask what car rider line looks like at drop off, what it looks like at pickup or bus rider. What does that look like? And that'll be the last functional skill that I'll say for the kids is teaching them their bus number. So all those buses, they look exactly the same, and inevitably, at some point in time, some kid's gonna get on the wrong bus, and there's 66 of them, 
And all of a sudden, the bus driver's going to be like, there's one kid still on the bus, and they're going to bring them back, and we'll call them. We'll get it fixed, and we'll, we'll work through it. Uh, but knowing what that looks like and teaching them that number. All right? So with that being said, Mr. Casey. Thank you, Dr. Maynard. So just to reiterate what uh, Dr. Maynard said, you know, the kids are super resilient. It's actually a lot tougher on the adults and having just uh, even changed a daycare recently, way tougher on my wife and I than it certainly was for our little one. Um, he didn't know any of the kids and just took off into the classroom. Um, and we were like, okay, bye. <laughs> um, but it, when they go to kindergarten, it's really a joyful experience. It's an incredible time of their lives. Um, I always tell the, the kindergarten students, and they don't know this, but th this is the best days of their lives. Um, school's a great place to be. Uh, the teachers are really engaging with their instruction, and they really have a wonderful time, especially those first few weeks of school. That being said, you know, and some of this will repeat a little bit, but please take advantage of that open house tonight. Open house at our schools are probably some of the biggest nights. We, we do it up big. We usually bring out Kona ice. We bring out some different vendors. Um, our PTAs are available. You can buy spirit wear, uh, school swag, as the kids would call it, and uh, you can get yourself all ready to go for, uh, for the first day of school. Um, again, they might be a little bit tired, but you know, they're going to work on their stamina as, as the school year goes on. Uh, communication is a big thing. Um, you're going to be registering at the school, getting your uh, data inputted into our systems, making sure your phone number is in our Blackboard Connect system so you can, be you can be getting our all calls. A lot of teachers are going to have their own way of communicating with you. Some of them are going to want to pick up the phone and talk to you. Some of them are going to want to shoot you a text. Um, but for the most part, most teachers have a mass communication system like the Remind system or what's very popular these days is Class Dojo. And some of you might already be familiar with that, where you can get messages to and from the teacher um, in a really, really efficient manner, and they can get back to you as well. Um, we also put out, most of our schools put out, we put out a weekly or Sunday night message or a weekly newsletter. We post that up to our Facebook pages. Um, so this is a good, good point for me to remind you, join your fa the Facebook page of your respective schools and see what's going on at those schools. That might help you make a decision about which school you want to attend if you're looking at open enrollment. Um, in addition to that Sunday night message, um, a lot of times we replicate this communication on our class dojo pages as well. So at least in my case, you know, Aiden Elementary, you're going to, if you're signed up for all the ways I communicate with you, you might get three or four reminders from me, uh, probably all at 645 on a Sunday evening for me to remind you what's going on that week, to remind you about spirit days that are coming up, uh, maybe schedule changes. Um, now I was reminding parents this week that uh, on Tuesday we, we didn't have school. Uh, just to keep everybody in the loop with the, the school calendar. And if there's something really important and urgent, we use those uh, methods to get a hold of everybody as well. Um, Mr. Maynus, uh, Dr. Maynus talked about lunch or snack. And again, just schedule conferences with your teachers as needed. They want to work with you. They don't want your child to have a bad experience. They want them to do well. They want to see them grow. Um, I'm monitoring the student growth. The principals are monitoring student growth. We have instructional coaches in each building. So, when, you know, if our teachers come up uh, you know, against a, a situation that maybe they're not familiar with or they need additional support to help that student grow or learn a particular skill or task, you know, they have resources to, 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 to help your child. Um, so please reach out to your child's teacher. Principals, um, the principal's office has changed. Back in the day, that's where you went if you were bad. Um, but I want everybody to know that the principal's office is totally accessible for our parents as well. We love meeting with you all um, for the bad and for the good. Uh, we love for the good. Um, but we also know we have to work through some precarious situations from time to time as kids grow and transition and we, we, need, we need to support our students to the best way possible. Um, if you're super uh, curious about curriculum, we follow the North Carolina Standard Course of Study. That usually comes up on every school tour. Um, so where can I find out what y'all are teaching? It's North Carolina Standard Course of Study. You can look it up online. Uh, Department of Public Instruction puts all that information out there, and we don't deviate from it. We got we to stick to a strict pace uh, to get through all the standards so we can pre prepare our kindergartners for first grade. Um, anything else you're thinking of, Dr. Maynard? All right, we'll be available for a Q&A at the end. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, both these gentlemen do phenomenal tours at their school. I've been on tours with both of them at their respective schools. So uh, if one of those schools is on your list, I encourage you to go to that tour. Uh, if you haven't caught on, tours are super important. <laughs> we want you to go to that. I'll also say we're, we're talking about grace and patience. 
uh, for drop off and pick up. Please extend grace and patience to your school. Uh, they are trying to figure out how to get the kids home as fast as you're trying to get them out of school back to your house. Um, and so it, the bigger the school, the longer the line. And it, it works itself out. What, it, what you see on day one will not be what it takes on day 10 and day 20. Uh, it's it's kind of like Chick-fil-A. They, they get a system, they figure it out, they move them in, they move them out. Uh, but of utmost importance is the safety of your student. And so uh, just grace and patience to let them work through that. So uh, we're going to bring up uh, Gretchen Wilson, who is the Director of School Nutrition Services, uh, to give us some good information about eating at school. Thank you for having me here today. Um, yes, I'm the one and my staff are members are the ones that will provide those healthy breakfasts and lunches to your students. and after school snacks if they're part of any after school program. And we have the fresh fruit and vegetable program. If you, oh, I had to click it. Look, see, I remember that. I'm the clicker, it right? It may not work if you have to Oh, the slide, okay, there it is. But it's still on, do you want me to bring? It's not on slideshow though, sir. I don't wanna mess it up. So, um, so yeah, I say we do breakfast and lunch. Uh, we do after school snacks at most of the schools. Uh, thank you. And we have fresh fruit and vegetable. If you're going to have your um, student enrolled in one of these eight schools, more than likely these eight schools will continue to have the program. We added one this year, um, so there was seven the year before. We had eight this year. Hopefully that will continue to grow. The fresh fruit and vegetable program is a program though that is done annually. You have to get that grant annually for the school. So I cannot promise, but more than likely we keep growing instead of going backwards that these schools, which is Bethel, Belvoir, Grifton, Northwest, South um, Greenville, Stokes, Falkland is the first year, this year we have, and ECU Community School. So those are the ones that have fresh fruit vegetable grant. If your school is enrolled in that school, that means that the students would get um, an, an additional serving of fruits or vegetable two to three times a week before or after lunch. It depends, every school's different on what time they need to do but um, it's offered at no cost and it's got education materials to go behind it, okay? So if you are part of those schools, that will be another emphasis that the child will get on nutrition education. All right, on me. See, see, I'm saying all right again. Yeah. Um, meal status. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about free reduced meal applications anymore. Um, so if you're a new parent coming in, um, your students are gonna, are gonna be eating for free. If you're from the, um, been going around had students already in our system, this was our first year that we've gone to free meals for all. So um, it's a great thing we have available to us through the Community Eligibility Provision, CEP. And um, it is a USDA uh, way that we're able to offer the meals at no cost to the students. DH Connolly High School is the only one though that we are um, uh, paying with uh, Pitt County school funds. They're not part of CEP, but every student in Pitt County um, ha does get breakfast and lunch if they're enrolled in Pitt County schools. So um, at, right now you do not have to pay anything and it is uh, something that goes onward. So we should have this program for four more years and then we go about and get recertified again. So what we have to do though in the future years, we're still gonna be pulling data from other resources. Um, they're called the identified student. We pull from SNAP benefits, TANF, we get homeless lists, runaway, migrant lists, and we have to pull that data every April 1st. So no free reduced applications are needed unless you, go to, unless you have a child at DH Conley High School because we still have to get that status, but no applications are needed. So well, I mean for, for the other schools, so that's a great thing. Elementary parents don't have to do a free reduced application unless you have a DH Conley student. Um, dietary needs. Um, so this is something that you have to keep up with if your student has anything special that keeps them from being able to eat our basic foods that we offer in schools. We cannot make any changes to the foods that we have available to you without a UMN, the unique meal time uh, report done for us and signed by your medical provider. <laughs> Nothing happens. My staff cannot make changes because then we're liable if we make any adaptions and it was incorrect. So until you have this process, you might want to bring something from home, go through the menus that are online. Our menus are always posted on the Pitt County School website. 
under the school nutrition tab and you can read information. Also the nutritionals for every ingredient that we have on the menu is on that tab under Pitt County Schools. So where you have your menus and then you have the dietary parts. So you can look up for your child if it's a basic thing. You can look up and y'all could decide yourself. Or if you want us to be responsible for it, then again, it can't happen until the form's completed by your medical provider with clear information. So it could take a while to get it approved if we have to go back and forth with your medical provider to get clear information. So we need to make sure we know exactly how far we need to go with something and what types of substitution that they're suggesting. And we work our best to meet it with what we have available and, um, and, and what the situations are. There are times we'll contact the parent, but that will process will go through. Um, what to go over, we do offer at lunch uh, bento boxes and chef salads, it rotates, it's posted on the menu which days, I'm not gonna say which days for next year because that could change, but we do offer those out there for the students. And um, then we have every snack item we have is called Smart Snack Approved, so they're lower sugar, sodium, um, calories, and they're whole grain. So it, the items, a lot of them look like the general one you see in the grocery stores. They're slightly different, better nutritionals. So I'm gonna let you know what we offer does, um, are a good item for you students to have if you want to do your bag lunches. You can still subsidize it. You can purchase milk from us, juices from us. If you want to get a a la carte item, it's totally fine. Okay, so make sure you know that part. And um, the UMN forms, like I said, and the menus are on our website and they're posted up there. The elementary still do get hard menus, but with printing and stuff, it's usually around the first week. So it's not always there for the beginning of the month. So online, you can always reach those resources if you need to, okay? And that's it for me. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Hope you have a great year. Oh, and please get those names to your students, as he said. It's very important. A JJ instead of a John is totally different. We need to know the John, the John James. We're going to need the full name. It will speed up the lunch and breakfast lines. Thank you so much. So there is a way um, that you can add money to their accounts if they want to oh. purchase something a la carte. You want to yes. speak Sorry to that real that. quick? Um, we do have uh, pay schools online that you can go and you can put money on the account. The one thing you will need, though, is their student ID number. So you will have to get that. Usually we say in the upper levels they can get it off of their, uh, their, I forgot the word, their schedule, but I'm not sure about the elementary. Can y'all tell me what, is there a certain place they get it beginning of the year with the student ID number on? Is there anything that the parents get? No? Okay. You can request it from your teacher if you want to put money online. You can also call our office. Your manager can look at the child too. So you can call your cafeteria manager, or you can ask your teacher, or you can come back to our office so you can look at the child. Because you will need that number to set up your account online. There is a marginal fee. It's not for us. It's the third party that does the processing. It really goes fast. We usually get it within minutes to our account, but it can take an hour, but usually it's pretty fast and it flows. Um, but money can be put on account for any out of items you would like to because again, those are free. But the money will stay there too, so what happens at the end of the year just keeps flowing to every grade they're at as long as they're in Pitt County Schools. So if you leave the school system, you would have to call our office and request a refund. Thank you so much for thinking of that. The, the thing I like about that is I can tell what my children are buying. And so you bought too many bags of chips. <laughs> Slow down on the chips there. Uh, so you can kind of track uh, what they're spending a la carte. But, that's in addition, so free lunch and breakfast uh, for all students, which is a wonderful thing uh, for our county. Uh, next, I wanna bring up Lori Reed, and she is the PCS School Nurse Program Manager. Uh, talk about school nurses at our schools here in the county. Traditionally, we follow this up with a uh, local pediatrician. Uh, Dr. Wooten is um, not feeling well and unable to be here tonight, so she's gonna to touch on just a few things related to that, uh, but there is, our recording last year, Dr. Wooten, if you want to hear what a pediatrician had to say, uh, we'll, you, we're going to give you a link afterwards anyway to get to where on YouTube to watch this recording if you need to. You can go back to last year's and watch what the pediatrician had to say, but tell us about school nurses uh, in the county. Okay. Can you get, get you pulled notes? up? Yeah, I didn't bring my notes up, so you're going to have to put my cheat, cheat notes up for me so I know what I'm supposed to say. Um, my name is Lori Reed, and I'm the nurse manager for our school health program here in Pitt County. And um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things maybe you've already heard, but we like to repeat some things that are really, really important so that you hear them multiple times and don't forget. Um, the main thing I want to talk about first off is the requirement for the North Carolina um, health assessment requirement. Every student that enters 
public school in North Carolina for the first time is required to have a North Carolina health assessment completed. There's a little clicker. They do have to have that completed within the first 30 days of the time that they enter school. And I know that uh, Ms. English already talked about this, but this is just really, really important because we really do not want to have to exclude your student from school. Um, they only get 30 days, that's it. The state gives them 30 days, and that's 30 calendar days, not 30 school days. So that's usually around September 26th or somewhere around that time. They have to have that um, completed health assessment turned in, and they have to have a complete shot record for kindergarten turned in. The health assessment has to be completed within 12 months of when they start kindergarten. So if your student is starting kindergarten this fall, they can get that health assessment at any time. You do not have to wait. If they actually had um, a health assessment done in um, September or October with their pediatrician already, like if they're on their annual cycle and they're seen in the fall um, or the winter time, they can go ahead and have that health assessment completed and the doctor's office should be willing to fill out that form for you based on the assessment that they did um, as long as it's any time within the 12 months prior to school, okay? Um, that's the most important thing. The health assessments communicate the health concerns and information from parents and physici physicians for all children entering public school for the first time. Health issues that may affect their learning are addressed. So it's really important that you go ahead and have your students seen by their pediatrician, talk with your pediatrician, your health care provider about anything that you might be concerned about that might have to be addressed in a from a school standpoint related to their health, okay? Um, we want to make sure that your children remain health and safe, healthy and safe when they're at school, and it's really difficult for us to do that when we don't know what your child's needs are. So it's just really important to make sure that your pediatrician does go ahead and document those things on the health assessment so we're aware of them. This is the list of the immunizations that they're required to have prior to kindergarten. These are state requirements. This is not a Pitt County Schools requirement. It is a state requirement. If you have any concerns about what your student may or may not need prior to starting school, I would um, recommend again that you have that conversation with your child's medical provider. And then our Pitt County Health Department also offers many, many opportunities for your students to get immunizations before they start school. So I would reach out to your health department. Um, if you don't have a primary uh, provider for your child, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and try to seek out a primary provider before they start school, but the health department is also a great resource for their immunizations. They don't generally offer clinics for the health assessments, however, so that's why it's important for them to have a physician. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about medications. So sometimes students need medications at school, and really the, um, the way that the policy is written for um, Pitt County is that it was developed to protect the safety and welfare of our students and the policy emphasizes that students take required medications prior to or after school hours. For those few medications which need to be administered during school hours, board policy requires completion of the authorization for medication form um, each school year and every time there is a change in the medication dose or frequency. So this is a copy of just what it looks like. There's nothing magical about it, but it is required. If your student does require any type of medication, and that may be over-the-counter or prescription medication, it is required that it's, the medication is accompanied by one of these forms. The pediatrician's offices generally have these forms. The school has these forms. And then we have all of our health forms also on the Pitt County Schools website. Um, and I will say this, if your child has um, a need for an emergency type of a medication, like an asthma inhaler, or an epinephrine pen if they have some sort of a life-threatening allergy, um, we definitely would like to have those medications at school. Like I said, we really want to keep them safe, we want to keep them healthy, um, but we really don't want those um, medications that you can give in the morning before school or after school. If you can give those at home, that's really best. It doesn't interrupt your child's day um, for them to have to go um, receive their medication. And, um, and many times it's actually the teacher or somebody in the office that's actually administering your child's medication. These are a couple other really important health forms that I want you to be familiar with. There's an asthma ac action plan, which is the one on the left. It's in lots of colors. Um, these are available in your physician's office if your child has asthma. We do request that you go ahead and get that authorization form for their medication as well as their asthma action plan, and that way we know how to treat their symptoms when they're at school. Um, the one on the right is an allergy and anaphylaxis emergency plan. If your child has a life-threatening allergy, um, to particularly to medication, but it could be to bee stings or fire ants or anything like that, it could be foods, um, we also request that your um, physician would fill this form out as well, and that way we know, again, how, what symptoms to be on the lookout for and how we would treat your student's symptoms. Again, this form would need to be accompanied by that medication form filled out by your child's physician. 
And just a side note, um, Gretchen Wilson with Nutrition Services actually just talked about this, but that, that unique mealtime needs form that she discussed, or we call it the diet order form, these are really, really important to have on file for your student if they have some sort of a, a significant allergy to any type of a food. We really want that, fo that um, form on file so that we can make sure that your child is served um, foods that are safe for them in the school building and so we can avoid having to give them emergency medication. So you can find the forms um, on the Pitt County Schools website. You would go to the student services section and then there's a section for school health program um, and, it, and it actually has a list of most of the forms that you would need. Can print those right there. This is just a, a picture of our school school nurses that are in Pitt County. I just want to tell you briefly about the school health program. Um, school nurses in Pitt County, um, they don't serve in what you might think of as a traditional school nurse role. We actually serve 41 schools and programs here in Pitt County and we currently have 24 nurses. So um, obviously we don't have a nurse in every single building every day, but every school does have a nurse available to them every day, all day. So we do have um, school nurses available to serve all Pitt County public schools and programs, and that's pre-K through early college programs. Um, our current student to nurse ratio is about one to 1,000 or 1,100 students. Um, and about 22% of students in Pitt County actually do have some sort of a health condition that we're trying to help them manage while they're at school. So that's why the nurses aren't necessarily going to be um, seen in a more traditional role where they're in the office to see all the sick students and give all the medications and so forth. Um, first of all, they're not on school grounds every day necessarily if they have multiple schools. Um, and secondly, we really, do, we really do try to focus on the needs of those kids that do have health conditions to make sure that they are safe, they're safe and that we're able to take care of their medical needs when they're in school. Um, all that to be said is that acute illness management and supervision of sick students is not something that the nurses are able to prioritize. So I would just tell you that so that you are aware that if, if the school calls and says, you know, that your child is running a fever or your child is vomiting, um, you know, please do understand that we do need those, that your student to be picked up. We don't have an office where they're going to be supervised, um, where the, somebody can actually take care of them, give them medications and things like that. We don't keep any medications um, stocked in our school building, so we can't just give your child an ibuprofen or a Tylenol. Those are things that you would have to provide with um, that authorization form from the physician's office. Obviously, if the school nurse is on school grounds and, you know, there is a situation where your child is injured um, or, you know, seems to be quite ill, you know, we're going to help them the best that we can when we're there. Um, and we also do have trained first responders that are on school grounds at all times, 24-7, um, that we've trained in CPR and first aid. So if your nurse is not available on school grounds at that time, there is somebody that's trained in, in being able to take care of emergency situations. And overall, we just have a, we have a great partnership. Um, the, the school health program is actually part of the ECU health, um, community health programs at the hospital, but we do work in the schools and we have a great relationship with our student services department in Pitt County Schools. And um, we just wanna make sure that we take the best care of your students that we can when they're in the school building. That's right. Um, all right, we have one more uh, presenter. Uh, so uh, let's see, Ashley Hurdle. Um, you, in, you in the room? There she is. So Ashley was sitting in this room last year just like you. And so we'd like to bring in a parent perspective just to kind of what was it like um, walking this journey you're about to walk. And so thank you for sharing your experience and um, thank you for coming last year. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Ashley Hurdle. Um, I was here last year. Um, I had a rising kindergartner, so he's now been in for a little over half a year and loves it. Um, I also have another kindergartner coming in um, for this coming year as well, so it was kind of nice to have a refresher. Um, I really appreciated coming to this information because for one, I'm about as type A as they come. So I needed all of the information and more. Um, and so I really felt like I got that information. Um, also coming from private school, um, my husband and I only were ever involved in private school. So we had no exposure at all to public school. We had no idea what to expect. Um, we, and, and we knew nothing. And so this was really helped us um, get our, kind of uh, soften our um, apprehensions about it. 
Um, it helped us, you know, get the information, but it mainly just put us at ease. Um, with the tours, I know we've, it's mentioned a lot, but I can't recommend that enough. We opted to do um, open enrollment, but what I really liked about the um, tours is we toured six schools, um, and they were all amazing. I mean, had we gotten into any of them, we would have been really happy with, the, with that option. Um, every school was so different, um, they, but they were all, um, my, my student, he loved going to each one. He loved going into like the gym. Um, there was other students around, and so he really liked that. Um, one of his favorite things was the cafeteria. I don't know, he liked the way it smelled. So, you know, it's, it's fun for them. It put him at ease, um, which I really liked. Um, and every school, there's, each school kind of has a different focus, like some are more STEM. Some are more are like leadership focused. Um, some have are like uh, just elementary. Some are K through eight. So they all kind of have a different vibe, and that was something that I didn't really anticipate. So it was really cool being able to see each school and which one was going to be the best fit for for our student. Um, but like I said, they were they were all really good. So I would have been happy with any of them. Um, the open enrollment process was really easy. Um, again, that was a little bit nerve wracking, but it was very straightforward and, and really didn't leave anything to question. Um, let's see, when it, and also when we found out which school we were placed in, the school also let us round back through and do another tour because then my son couldn't remember which one it was. <laughs> so we went back and we toured it again and that, he, that got him really excited for it. Um, open house was really good, again, especially for my nerves as a parent. Um, and then the student, like knowing where his seat was, he already had like his little name tag and, you know, meeting the teacher and, you know, she gave him a hug right off the bat. He felt really good about it. And that made me feel good dropping him off for the first time. Um, let's see, and getting involved. Um, you know, you can just drop them off and pick them up and that can be it, but there's other ways that you can be much more involved, like a PTO or a PTA. Um, some schools, like I know the school we're at, allows us to, like his birthday was Monday, they let us come and eat lunch with him. They will have parties or field trips and they'll invite, you know, uh, parents to attend. Um, again, my uh, the teacher, he, she said that we can come and um, like help volunteer and so that may differ from school to school but I really appreciated that like openness for um, for parents to be as involved as you want to be um, and then um, let's see the dojo that they mentioned that's really important um, because there's so much information our principal will post um, the upcoming things she posts she leaves a voicemail every uh, Sunday night then she posts it to uh, dojo. It's also posted to our Facebook group um, and it's posted to the PTO group. So you're going to get your information, which I really liked. Um, and we can message back and forth. So like uh, a couple weeks back when my son was sick, that was, you know, they were able to touch base and say, hey, he's not running a fever, but just letting you know he's not acting like himself. And so we were able to kind of stay in touch to see like how was he doing throughout the day. And that was really, that's been good for me as a parent to know that a teacher is, knows my student and is checking in throughout the day. Um, and, and it was that he ended up having a fever later on, we were to pick, pick him up, but that was just really great communication. Um, check your kids' folders, um, that's really Im important um, because they have really good, like some, some teachers in kindergarten do homework, some do not but they always send like, really good stuff and like what, um, they'll sometimes send like flashcards and things you can work on with your kid at home, which is cool. Um, and then, um, let's see, the last few things that I found really important, the pickup line can be long, so like, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and, um, but also one thing that I didn't anticipate was the kid learning how to latch themselves into their, into their seat 
um, we used a, like a five point harness, but my child, he could not get that unlocked or locked and you can't get out of your car in the middle of the line. So you may have to adjust the, the you know, a different car seat. We had to go to a booster that was easier because for the life of him, he couldn't get it. My parents couldn't get it. Um, you really had to like get in there. And so we just had to switch his seating totally so that it, because you can't get out of the car, you got to keep rolling. So that's something to practice with your student or just regroup and do something else like we had to do. Um, and then um, I think the biggest thing is that the t teachers really do love their, the, the students. Um, they, they get to know your kid. Um, and that's been, I think, the biggest thing when coming here, getting like at ease, knowing that kids are going to be fine, but then going through like the open house and the tours and all, and like getting all this information really gave that reassurance to the kid that the students are being taken care of by the teachers. They really do love them. Um, they get to know them really, really well. Um, and so I feel really comfortable leaving them and knowing that they're gonna be safe. So, yeah, so those were just some of the things that I learned from this and just as a first year getting into like the whole kindergarten experience. But it's not, it's stressful, but it's not that bad. So you can take a breath, it's not that bad. <laughs> So, um, I have three children. I have a ninth grader, a uh, sixth grader, and a third grader, and they've, they started in Pitt County Schools. They're, honest to goodness, there is not a school in our county that I will not send my own children to. So, wherever your child ends up, um, they're going to be loved, they're going to be cared for, they're going to be well prepared uh, to be received into their building, and they're going to have a phenomenal year. Uh, and you've got teachers and administrators that, if you've got a struggle, they're ready to walk through that with you, so communication, communication, communication. Um, cannot stress how important that is to ask questions, to be open. So with that being said, do we have any questions that we might not have answered? Yes? I want to know why you would be denied for open enrollment. Like, what were some reasons why somebody would be denied? Ms. English, we'll turn that over to you. Uh, the kindergarten, kinder, kindergarten family, um, the only primary reason that you'd be denied is if you applied for an open a school that wasn't an open enrollment enrollment approved school. Um, if they if you apply for a school like if you we get this all the time and just because I think there's some confusion about which application you need to fill out for what. Um, if you live in the school attendance zone that you're applying for, one of us will reach out to you and say, hey, I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't an error or um, but there's usually the only reason um, for a new student coming in to be denied would be that the school is not an open enrollment school. Now, during the school year, um, and this is a new change to policy, during the school year, if we have families apply for open enrollment and their child has a history of attendance issues or um, has a hard time following the code of conduct at the school they're at, we'll review that very closely and it may be denied based on that. But coming into the school system, whether you're a kindergarten family or coming into Pitt County from outside of the county, um, it, the only reason it would be denied is if the school's not on the list. So it's not a numbers game where you only have so many placements? If, and if it is a numbers game, those schools aren't on the list. So sure. the schools that aren't on, aren't on the list are the ones that are already experiencing <laughs> now, I will say that there have been scenarios that you've had to close certain grade levels. Yes. It, it has happened. So, word of advice, March 1, if you want to do open enrollment, go in and do it. <laughs> um, but if you do it in that window, and you, you're going to get in okay. um, for the ones that are approved for open enrollment. Um, I can't remember if you said it. One thing to remember open enrollment is you do have to provide your own transportation. Oh, yes. So, um, right. bus does not come to pick up your child out of the open enrollment if you're not in your district at school. Can I say one more thing? Yes, you sure can. The other thing um, to remember is if you are approved for open enrollment and throughout the school year, if um, attendance problems pop up or if behavior problems pop up, the principal at, that, at the open enrollment school does have the right to revoke um, open enrollment. Yes. So the March first date is that 
just for open enrollment, or is that for all enrollment? Like, if your school that you're going to isn't open enrollment? So, March 1st is just the open enrollment date. Okay. So, if you're going to do open enrollment for a school, wait until you hear before you enroll. If the, if the regular enrollment happens to be in that window, and I don't think any of them are, but they could be, um, wait till you hear from open enrollment, then enroll in the school that, that you're going to. You're going to hear by that two-week window in the middle of March. Uh, but no, if that's only for open enrollment, and then the dates will be listed on the Big County website as to when the enrollment dates are for that. I will say that the earlier you can enroll the school you're going to go to, the, the better, because principals are starting to look at classes and, and move things around. So it's, it's just better if you, to not wait until right before school starts to enroll. Um, so do that as soon as you can. Yes? I was going to say, last year, I know that we open enrolled at our school. We didn't cross our line um, uh, with the spring break. Ours is the one we applied for, their enrollment was actually before we found out. But we just contacted that school, and they were like, oh, come on down. And if you get denied, we're going to throw it out. But otherwise, come on down. So that's what we did for our school, and it was super easy. And so and we ended up getting into it, so it was fine. But we just communicated with the principal, and she was like, yeah, just come on down, put your application in. If it doesn't work out, we'll go from there. That answer your question. What other questions do you have? Um, if a student is enrolled in the Pitt County Preschool program, does all that documentation roll forward into the interim, or do you have to redo all of the you know, health assessments and all that? Good question. Which which one wants to take the answer to that? They have that if your if your kid's in pre K in Pitt County School. Um, you have to re-enroll for kindergarten. They will not. They will not just automatically roll over. So, but if they have like a, for a 504 example, that comes with them, correct? Um, there will be a meeting for 504 or an IEP. Okay. Um, it's called a transition meeting from pre-K to kindergarten. And so you. For for pre-K, you're given choices when you um, do your application for pre-K. So when you go to kindergarten, it's based off your domicile, where your address is, and that's what school, kindergarten, your child should attend. Um, but if they have some, a 5 and 4 plan or something like that, I would always have a copy to take with me to that school, just so you can already have it in hand and make that process quicker and smoother. So for pre-K, did you have to do the same help forms? Yeah, same as my older kid. So I'm saying so, What other questions? Yes.
Other questions? I have a question. So it made it sound like even if we had an appointment at our school to do enrollment, that there was no point in filling out this packet because you would have to do it on a computer? So if they've got a paper copy and they filled it out, is that okay or does it have to go through the computer either at school? I don't know. I Googled and it came up with the health assessment form and all that stuff, so I wouldn't have to Y'all mind. We haven't transitioned all of our we haven't transitioned our information yet online. We're waiting we're waiting for March first to get closer. Um we don't you don't have to have an appointment to go to a school to enroll your child either. So that's some of the things that we've tweaked. Um but it's back to that guidance piece. Um but you are giant on the spot. Um, but we really would prefer to keep her online either at home or at the school. So don't don't go Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I just the health sure. assessment form is still the same, however. So you can go ahead and get that filled out by your child at any time. I was thinking of filling it out for my husband to have the answers. Go ahead and get that done now. You know, March 1st or we later. Who else had a question? I have two questions about lunch. Um, can they bring, they can bring their own lunch? Yes. Yeah, okay. Can they bring their own lunch and then buy and then bring and then buy? Or is it yes. Yeah. They can okay. choose. The menu is posted online, oh. so you're welcome to pick which days you want oh, to okay. bring up from home or so you want to subsidize stuff that we have. Okay. Or to bring them home or to bring school after school breakfast. Okay. Okay. And breakfast each school, their timing is different when they can include it. So you would check with your school when you go on your, your visits to see when you um, when that school slows down. I know some schools have more issues with drop off um, time to get through from breakfast. So and, and some of the students that are how long they allow the breakfast to stay open. Um, so that's a little bit different for each school in that part. But we would like to keep as many breakfast as we can. Um, especially if you feed them at home at six in the morning, but then at the eight, it's close to eight o'clock. That breakfast is going through them. So you're welcome to come and eat school breakfast too. That's perfect. Okay, so they get both breakfast and lunch, or is it one of the other? No, both. They're, they're both for free, and they both, you know, they'll have a certain time slot they go to lunch. They don't have to turn that. That's assigned by the school administrators. Their schedule. And then breakfast is usually somewhere between 7.15 and 7.45, unless stuff changes. Slightly different, but around 7.30 is breakfast. Is it? Yes. I will say anything you can do to practice it and help out with the current community would be good, but like every morning I have people on both sides of the, of my drop off line of uh, staff members that can help as well. So they can help with that. Now if they're doing that for you know fifty people in the road, we're going to slow things down. Uh, and that does speed up a lot as the school year goes, but we always have staff out there to be able to assist too. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What are the questions? Can I say something about that meal? Since the meal is uh, back and forth, <laughs> especially if you don't eat every day, you still need to have that diet order in place if you got any changes. So if you say, oh, my child's never going to eat, you're going to have that one day you couldn't make lunch, <laughs> and you're going to wish they could have something changed, and I won't be able to make any changes. My staff will not make any changes until the student says, well, I have this allergy. So if you think there's any opportunity, it's best just to go ahead and fill out the and I would say also just for food purposes, most most schools they have some type of snack during the day as well for you to like spend. So you would have that for them to be able to have at some point in time in the day, just depending on when their lunch is. That might be earlier in the morning than they have lunch, or if, if they have an early, like for example, my kindergartners start eating at 10:30 in the morning. So you know, at about 12 30, they, they dine for some food, so they typically have a snack a little bit later in the afternoon. I would also share if you're going to send in, you know, treats for your child's birthday and whatnot, make sure those are a commercially purchased, not homemade. Good, good point. Any other questions?
I'm, you know, obviously there's many hurdles we have to get through before we get to that point, but like how do we find that? What's the general timeline before the first day of school we find out that information? So yes. schools are a little different on yeah. like teacher. Every school's a little bit different, different with that. Um, I will tell you one thing for it is most, I mean, all of our schools are going through some type of assessment with them with basic ELA math um, and even looking at some, some behavioral as well. Um, some, of, some of them will do the assessments in the spring going into the summer. Some schools do their assessments and call you in over the summer to come in. My school, technically, we do it at the very beginning of the school year. So we actually develop our rosters. Um, the thought process for us is that we want to see who's coming in and get the most accurate data to be able to place them. So it all changes just a little bit. But when you take that school tour that we talked about, um, ask that question, like, how does this school handle that registration process? <laughs> Our, yes, our kids do a do a assessment with the teacher. They also are able to rotate and be able to meet a lot of the teachers. So that's a big part of that as well. So a lot of the schools will post on their Facebook page like a week before, two weeks before. This is the school supply list. Yes. Um, you can bring those with you at the open house, and so they're not lugging a bunch of bags when they come in for first morning. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually available at like Target or Walmart. They'll have a uh, school supply list available. Uh, some schools have experimented with uh, like purchasing some supplies online, have them delivered to the school. We'll be able to try to see. I've seen that in a couple different schools. Other schools vary slightly, but we're all making an effort to try to get information out in a manner that just makes it smooth for our parents and our students to get it. If you're having a good day, we're having a good day. I know last year, if you shop online at Walmart, they, you could like look up Pitt County and your school, and like they would like get your school supply list <laughs> and like ship it to your house. Um, so that was a resource available for that. And a lot of teachers will have a wish list and extra things um, at Open House, just those kind of things that you need that don't stay in stock long in the classroom, like snacks. Um, that a kid doesn't have a snack, teachers have snacks you know, for everybody to be able to have a snack during, during that snack time. Any other questions? Yes? Um, my question is actually about the tour that everyone keeps talking about. Yep. It came in a few moments late. Sure. Um, So that QR code right there, uh, that is our current school tour list. And I will say, if you look at that and the list of the school you want to tour is a day you cannot absolutely do it on that tour, uh, reach out to me. Uh, we'll try to see if we can work on, if we have a group that we need more than one family can't go on that particular day, we'll try to work with you to set up a tour with that school. Um, you're going to get an email from me or my um, intern later this week and it'll have the link in it as well so if you don't scan the qr code tonight that's fine we'll have a link to the sign up in it we'll have a link to the youtube channel so you can go back and watch this again if you need to so you'll have a way to click on that link uh, to see that but that qr code will get you to that sign up right now and again there's two schools that aren't on there yet that will be added in the coming days uh, but the rest of them are, are up there yes um, when we do a tour um, can they tell us about the access Yes, okay. that's a great question to ask on the tour. Uh, all schools are a little different as far as what um, after school pick up at the school. Some schools have um, uh, community schools after school program on site. They're all they're all different. That's a great question to ask at the specific school on the tour. Is there an early drop off? Um, some schools do have early drop off. It's not. Um, consistent with all the schools and they're all slightly different again another good question specific to the school when you go on the tour at that particular school yes um, I'm all here for the great run definitely agree with that <laughs> but um, are, is there like a worry that the site or like the open moment day might crash and if so like we don't have to worry too much we're just saying we're definitely going to be able to get into the open moment school that we have as our choice like what's the process I guess that you would recommend enrollment process in Pitt County Schools, it's actually the same, that's the process we will use for registration in general math. Okay. Um, it's just different links. So the open enrollment link, which will be linked in the, on the website, you can go there. We've never had it crash before. Okay. Never. So it should be. Okay. 
Two week window, right. so if it's not working on the first, it'll work on the second. It'll be this part. It's not working, Holly, today. No. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Any other questions? So, my guess is you might have questions that pop up later. So, my email's on the back of this little sheet. Uh, let me know. Uh, secondly, if you have friends and family that have rising kindergartners and would benefit from this, we're doing this again on Thursday morning at St. Timothy's at 9.30. So share that with them. Say it was helpful or it was terrible, don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but we think it is. And so please share that. We're doing it at 9.30. And again, we've recorded it. And we'll share that as well. I'll post on our YouTube channel after uh, later this week. Um, yeah. Early Childhood Development Pep, please pick this up. Um, we would love to have you be a part of that. Uh, four week cohort. Uh, lots of other resources on the table. Uh, we're around to answer other questions if you have them. Thank you for being here and we look forward to welcoming your children to Pitt County Schools in the fall.